Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here at this TechSoup hosted webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about three ways Amazon Web Service and New Relic can enhance your fundraising efforts. I'm so excited because I don't know much about the cloud, and so I'm here to learn too. We have some experts here who's going to share lots of information for you. Um, my name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. So I'm going to move out of the way. Before I do, I'm going to show you how you can engage. Of course, you know you're on mute. If you need the closed caption button, go ahead and type on that CC button. But since you're on mute, please use the Q&A section and you can type your questions in the chat room. We have lots of team members here that can answer your question. We're going to send you the video replay, replay with the slides in about 48 hours so you can gain some more insights. And um, so you can take notes or just watch it on the video replay. I'm going to turn this over to Jamin Gluck. He is with Amazon Web Service. And Jamin, welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Aretha. And hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jamin, and I am a program manager at the AWS Nonprofits team. And it's my sincerest pleasure to be here with you today to talk a little bit about how AWS, as well as New Relic, can help your organization succeed, thrive, and increase its fundraising uh, capacity. So um, with that in mind, I want to jump in and just ask, who here has either heard of AWS? If you've heard of AWS, put a one in the chat. If you've heard of it and you're using it, put a two in the chat. And if it's all brand new to you, go ahead and throw a three in the chat so we can see a little bit about what we're working with. Okay, wonderful. So we've got some ones, some threes, perfect, perfect. So a little bit about what you can expect from today's presentation. By design, Matt and I will be speaking at a very high level overview, introduction, introductory type of information to help you understand just the beginning of what it means to use AWS as well as New Relic to support your organization. This is not going to be a presentation that is super technical, but instead I like to think of it as an opportunity that if let's say this weekend you are at a dinner party and someone asks you, hey, what's New Relic? Or have you ever heard of AWS? You'll have the confidence to say yes. And these are a little bit of more details about each of those and how they can support uh, nonprofits of all shapes and sizes. So if that's what you're interested in, then you are in the exact right place. So let's jump into it. Um, I'm freezing on my end, so I'm glad you got to see me, but you'll can now just hear me. Um, and let's talk a little bit about what is AWS. And again, I also wanna emphasize and encourage everyone to put questions in the chat. This is meant to be a very conversational hour together. This is your time for you. So if you have any questions, then please do place them in the chat. But in short, when it comes to AWS, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, it's a cloud computing platform that provides a wide range of services to help nonprofits and organizations store, process, and analyze data. So when we think about the resources to run different applications and services in the cloud. That's the first thing we're gonna talk about is just making sure you have a clear sense of what AWS is. Then we'll talk a little bit more about what New Relic is. Moreover, once you have a grasp for the two, again, AWS separately and New Relic a little bit more separately, uh, we'll hear from Matt a little bit about how AWS and New Relic can work together. And then what I think is the most important part is we will talk about how you can get started. Again, this will be an introduction to these. So it'll be a way that you can get your feet wet, get your hands on the keyboard and begin to dabble with both of these products. So with that in mind, let's jump in to a little bit more about what AWS is and specifically how it's powerful for nonprofit fundraisers. I wanted to speak a little bit at the top of this call about how AWS can help you with your fundraising goals. So the first thing that comes to mind is that it provides a highly reliable and scalable computing infrastructure that can handle large volumes of traffic during fundraising campaigns. So we'll talk about this a little bit more, but when we think about scalability, we think about the demands on your organization 
for its infrastructure or its technological resources. And AWS helps it so that during a fundraising campaign, you can ensure your website, as an example, stays live and stays working really quickly. So who here has experienced either on the fundraising side through a nonprofit or as the donor side, when you go to a website during a specific campaign and either the website's down or it's working slowly, maybe you can put in a one in the chat if you can relate to that experience. Perfect. You can even go to the next slide. That'd be great. We can talk a little bit more specifically about the different benefits of AWS. And we just talked there about scalability. So again, when we're thinking about this hypothetical dinner party that you might be at this weekend when someone asks you, hey, what is AWS and how can it help your nonprofit? One thing that can come to your mind is scalability and that it can scale up when there's a higher demand on your website during peak fundraising times, and it can scale down when that peak and that uh, high level of usage decreases when the campaign is complete. Additionally, I wanna talk a little bit more about cost savings. So by using AWS, your nonprofit can reduce its IT costs by avoiding the need to purchase hardware and infrastructure that can be very expensive and not always used. So by using AWS, you don't have to maintain that server that oftentimes you might be able to see in your closet with a big fan. And those servers can be costly, not only to purchase, but also to maintain and to fix. But by using AWS, you have the opportunity to outsource that type of uh, hardware to AWS as well as its maintenance. So AWS will provide you with what we call a pay-as-you-go model where you're only paying for the technological resources as you use them. So again, at this dinner party, you're talking about scalability and now you can also talk about cost savings, right? You can explain that AWS allows your organization to use the resources only when you need them and to pay only when you're using them. And then the third bit that I think is really important, especially in the context of fundraising, is the security that it provides. So AWS has built-in security features that can help you keep your donor data safe. I'd like to hear in the chat, if it's relevant, how are you currently managing, storing, and manipulating or leveraging, rather, your donor data at your organization? Some examples could be Excel, Google Sheets, a uh, piece of paper with, um, okay, with, with a pencil and notebook. Okay, Kindful, exactly. So I'm sure Salesforce, exactly right, beautiful. So when we think about this donor data, I'd love for security to come to mind in the context of using AWS for your fundraising. Again, it has those built-in security features that some of the biggest organizations and governments leverage and take advantage of at AWS that your nonprofit, no matter its size, can use as well. So if you go to the next slide, we can talk a little bit more about what we can do with data. Data, 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 right? We hear this term all the time about data is gold. And I just want to highlight a little bit more about the value of AWS to enhance your organization's use of its donor data. So I'm not going to run through all of these examples now, but the main point here is that AWS can enable a powerful data analysis that can help your nonprofit gain insights into fundraising campaigns, as well as to donors, so that you can understand who your donors are and how they best engage with your organization. Do they prefer text message or do they prefer email? Is it better in snail mail? And does certain messaging work better than others? So again, in addition to what I just described about uh, security, scalability, and cost savings, it's also really important at a high level to understand that AWS has the capacity to help 
with your data needs and provide data solutions. So again, that's a really high level overview of just what AWS is, as well as how it can add value to your organizations in the context of fundraising. And for this last slide, I just wanna sh share some ways that you can use programs provided by AWS specifically for nonprofits. So if you don't mind just going to the next slide, I'm gonna highlight three different programs. Perhaps you've heard of these, but these are available to organizations of all shapes and sizes. I'm also gonna try and come back on video because it feels weird just seeing my name there. If I go blurry, my apologies in advance. But the first one I wanna uh, speak to is this middle one, the AWS Nonprofit Credit Program. It is our sincere pleasure to work in collaboration with TechSoup to deliver credits to nonprofits all over the world, no matter their size or mission area. And what's a credit, you might say? So a credit is essentially a gift card, but instead of it being to Starbucks or to Amazon.com, this credit enables nonprofits to get started on AWS without those upfront costs. So you can visit TechSoup, specifically the AWS Marketplace option within the TechSoup website to take advantage of these credits, no questions asked, and it's available at this very point. Additionally, I wanna talk about the AWS Imagine Grant. This is an Imagine, I mean, excuse me, this is a grant that awards cash as well as credits to 501c organizations to help them take their big ideas in terms of their use of AWS and bring them to fruition and bring them to life. I'm gonna provide these links Oh, thank you so much. I see that, Aretha. I, you're, you're thinking ahead of me. Um, so I really appreciate that. And um, I'll provide these links. But before I do, I just want to uh, comment on the third and final one, which is called AWS Tech Action. And AWS Tech Action is specifically geared towards enabling organizations who are working with AWS in the cloud to build fundraising, donor, and member engagement solutions on the cloud. So if you have an idea that might have come to your mind based on what I just described in the couple slides previously, then Tech Action is a wonderful resource for you to work with AWS to understand how you can use credits as well as technical support to bring that idea to life. So that's a little bit about AWS, a little bit about how we support fundraising related goals. And then in the chat are more resources so that you can continue to learn about how AWS can support your organization. And now it's my sincerest pleasure that once you have a grasp on what AWS is, I wanna pass it over to Matt to explain a little bit more about what New Relic is, and then we'll talk about how they work together so seamlessly. Matt, over to you. Thank you so much, Jamin. Uh, tough act to follow. Really appreciate uh, what you've shared with us. Uh, delighted to be here with you and to be sharing with uh, our fellow attendees here. I'm joined by my teammates, Carrie and Holly. Uh, we are so grateful for all of the great work uh, within the TechSoup community by all its members. So thank you for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule to learn a bit more about AWS and New Relic. New Relic, what is it? So at a very high level, you can think of New Relic as basically your guide, like a GPS to help you navigate reliability and performance within your technology. So in the case of our partnership with AWS, if you have workloads running in AWS data centers, whether it might be uh, virtual servers like EC2 workloads or whether it might be uh, an API gateway or anything else. I'll try to keep the propeller head speak to a minimum here. But if you have AWS workloads or services, we can bring the data that's native from the AWS platform about their performance, about your spend, about errors, anything that might be relevant to your donors, your constituents, you and your team, your management about how to make those experiences better, 
how to make them more effective and for your entire operation to move with lower risk and more quickly. Now, New Relic is a very powerful platform. Uh, Jamin did a wonderful job of talking about data. Data is really uh, vital to every part of a nonprofit's operation, and it's becoming increasingly so. So in the case of New Relic, we add value by making that data easier to gain insights about decisions you might need to make about your technology, as well as being one step ahead of your donors or your constituents and their experiences so that you and your team can sleep better at night and you know, ultimately put your focus on where it belongs, which is on delivering your mission and optimizing the experiences around it. In the case of the New Relic platform, what's different uh, than you know, other monitoring tools you might be familiar with. Well, for one thing, we can uh, give you insight to everything you do in AWS, as well as other platforms, whether they may be third party, whether they may be websites, whether they may be uh, servers. So we can provide you with what is called that proverbial single pane of glass, make your life easier, see all of your operations in one place, as well as provide uh, the insights that you need in order to take action. What could we be doing more of and what experiences can we be making better? We can move on to the next slide. Like AWS, our wonderful partners, uh, we have a few different ways that we work with nonprofits. The first I'll speak to here is our impact fund. We started this last year and we were so delighted by this opportunity. We're going to be doing it again. Now, what the Impact Fund is about is providing grant funding to 501c3 organizations and specifically to uh, fund efforts to use technology, technology more strategically and more impactfully, make your operation more efficient. Now, I will say you don't have to be a New Relic customer or participating in our nonprofit program in order to to uh, participate or apply to our impact fund. So stay tuned on that and uh, you know, follow us online. We'll, we'll be doing that next iteration again soon. Pro bono is a way that we help our observability for, for good customers. I'll speak to that in a moment, but for now I wanna focus in on what we call observability for good. Observability for good is our program for nonprofits. It's what carry Holly and I spend the vast majority of our time on uh, amplifying and enabling nonprofit customers and their missions. That's what really matters to us. So how do we go about doing that? We provide a really enriched free tier of services within the New Relic platform. That really helps reduce the risk for you and your organization to get started with what we call observability. You might know it as monitoring, the difference between what traditional monitoring solutions provide and how we think about observability at New Relic is monitoring tells you maybe the what. Observability is about unpacking the why, getting to the root cause of why did that happen? Why did our website slow down? Or why did this server fail? We help you get to those answers more quickly and more readily by enriching the data that we bring in from AWS. In the case of observability for good, not only do you get uh, a lot of data to work with, we give you a thousand gigs every month for free, as well as five full users in our platform. Again, for free, this is something that we genuinely do to help the community. We would love for you to uh, reach out to us and learn more. One of the other ways we add value is through the pro bono program. So not only do we give away the, the software as well as give you pre-negotiated discounts if you outgrow those free benefits, we also will help you on your way. We have volunteers that sign up twice a year, uh, New Relic employees, we call them Relics, who join us to run enablement projects. What's an enablement project? It's a way that you can learn how to use our platform better and to be more effective with it under the guidance and uh, support of a team during that two week period. We have that coming up uh, late April and early May. So 
If you might be interested in signing up for our program, Observability for Good, or learning more about Pro Bono, please do reach out to us. We can move on. Now, in terms of what is this platform all about, uh, we provide a more comprehensive set of visibility into every kind of technology you might be operating. Now, today we're talking about AWS, and AWS is super near and dear to us. We are heavy users of AWS at New Relic, and we're so delighted to be partnering with them. We can get into some of the details further on, and I see some of the questions popping up. What I want to speak to at a high level here is that we're about enriching that data that's made available from AWS natively and putting the context around it so that, again, going back to this metaphor of just like when you're driving your car, being able to see everything on the dashboard in one glance, this is what we can do by enriching that data from the AWS platform and making it easier for move, you to move and your team to move through all of what you do more quickly and with lower risk. So we bring the data into our platform at massive scale. We help you make sense of it and we can provide what we call uh, alerts. That's a way that you can be notified or your team can be notified about something that might be changing. It might be changing for the good. It might be changing for the bad. We provide a lot of those types of insights right out of the box. So it's a matter of in seconds being ready to go and being able to see if there is something that's broken, being able not only to see that it's broken, but where it's broken and why so that whether it might be a service provider that you're working with who needs to take action or whether it's something that your team maintains, you can do that more quickly and again, all through a single user interface. At the end of the day, nonprofits are really, truly uh, charged with doing more with less. At, as a former uh, technology leader in the nonprofit space, uh, I'm very familiar with this. and. You know, in some ways, it's even exacerbated by the way that funding can uh, ebb and flow, as well as how uh, technology may be seen in some cases as a cost rather than a strategic lever. We see the importance of the technology and helping you and your teams be more effective. So every bit of additional cost savings that we can help wring out from your, your technology estate, that's part of what we can do. Not only do we have visibility in those ways from the platform around maybe where you have uh, workloads that are oversized, for example, and spending a little bit more than what you might need to. We also, through uh, the additional guidance our team provides, Holly, Carrie, and I are here. A part of our, our responsibility is to you as a customer is to help you be thinking about what you can do from an optimization standpoint. So again, reach out to us, learn more about how we can help you through the various ways that we work, not just with the tool, but maybe how to be thinking about your work in new ways. You can move on. So I'm gonna share a customer story. This is not a nonprofit customer story specifically, but I want you to stop and think about for a moment that for an e-commerce business, it's really not substantially different work from managing a donor uh, experience online. At the end of the day, whether it's about moving the needle on attracting visitors through to your site through having really top flight search engine optimization, or whether it might be the reality that each of you and your organizations do really, really important work. At the same time, as Jamin alluded to earlier, if someone comes to your donation page, and if they're getting a really sluggish response or an error or that that page is actually down, heaven forbid, in all likelihood, they're maybe not going to come back. They might go somewhere else. The same is true for e-commerce. So as you hear this story, I want you to think about those things. I want you to hear in this nutshell what might be applicable to your organization's work. We've been working with New Relic this year to look at Google Core Web Vitals, which is um, one of the most important ways we judge how performant our site is. We had uh, New Relic help us to create a Core Web Vitals dashboard. This is essentially one of our sources of truth as to whether the site is performant or not. 
it's been a real game changer because we've been able to align the engineers, the, the management and our digital teams into this single dashboard to show this is what's going on with our site and these are the improvements we need to make. We noticed very quickly that our score was very, very low actually. So we Im implemented a program where we bought technical SEO in-house with our own engineers and we set about improving our caching, improving our server-side rendering, uh, image compression. We set about a program of improvements and over six months, we, we saw those core web vital scores in New Relic jump up from about 45 to somewhere today, we're sitting at 85 to 90. We have data in New Relic to prove that the experience is good for the customer or bad. And that's been um, a real game changer for us. New Relic is a huge platform. It has um, many different features and New Relic is actively engaged with me and Kurt Geiger to make sure we're getting value for money out of our investment. That we're using every piece of functionality we can in New Relic and that actually we're using it in the right way, especially around our core Black Friday period. So just to build on some of the thoughts that Chet shared there, it may not be Black Friday, it might be Giving Tuesday. At the end of the day, the work that your fundraising teams are doing in optimizing the experience for your donors is vitally important. We may not all on the call be familiar with this concept of Google Core Vitals. We can talk about it with you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if that's something you might want to learn about. The idea there is that we can, in effect, wire up your donation page or other front end experiences in a way to provide insight into exactly how your donors are seeing that donation page and whether it's an optimized experience, whether your score might be up at that 85 or 90 type of level, or whether it might be lower than that and there might be some work needed. Further, going back to the idea of the how and the why, we can give you the insights through the New Relic platform as to what specifically are the opportunities for optimization. Now, in terms of the Better Together story, that's really why we're here, uh, to help bring the power of the AWS platform and New Relic's platform together. We are better together. And to unpack that for just a moment, I've alluded to this already, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a bit, perhaps. I think the, the thought here is that AWS can provide the data right out of the gate to New Relic. And in the case of New Relic, whether your workloads are in AWS or things that may be living outside of it, or frankly, honestly, maybe somebody else that you're working with on your fundraising platform, maybe their workload is at AWS, but you don't necessarily have access to it based on how you're doing business with them, like a SaaS provider. Any of those different kinds of scenarios, New Relic, can integrate with and provide you insight into the work that you're doing and the donor experiences that matter most to you and how you can improve them, how you can take steps forward and again, do more with less. We're a really strong partner with AWS. I'm so delighted again to be here with Jamin. He does phenomenal work. The whole team at AWS does phenomenal work. We would love to help you move your fundraising forward and advance your mission. So again, we really appreciate you being here. The idea of data being gold is absolutely right. Jamin's right on point with that. Our, our mission is to help you make more and better sense out of that data, act quickly, and to really move on the journey of digital transformation and optimization fluidly with lower overhead, with more speed and lower risk. It matters depending on what your goals are, of course, and we always love to learn from each of our customers what their needs might be and what might make sense at the first step of their journey versus what they might be imagining a few years for, years ahead. At the end of the day, sometimes it takes really settling down and making things easier in the here and now to be even thinking about what those years ahead might be like. So we're always eager to hear from our customers and prospective customers and here to help you.
So I'm going to um, circle back to an idea here and maybe, uh, you know, Jamin might have some thoughts to add on to this as well. But, um, you know, our goals are to really help you understand the benefits of what AWS can provide your organization. And the same goes for New Relic. Um, you know, at the end of the day, whether it's something that is really uh, right in front of you as far as saving money, saving time, those are things that we want to make actionable and unlock for you. Uh, we have the capabilities and, uh, you know, every, every need, every customer is slightly different. So, you know, we'd love to hear more about your opportunity and what you're thinking about. Perhaps that's something you might uh, want to add in via the chat. And similarly, we've touched on it briefly about some of our program offerings and, you know, how AWS and New Relic really uh, try to enrich the work that you're doing and the community at large. Uh, we're happy to talk more about some of that and uh, think about, you know, what it means to really be up-leveling your organization's mission using technology. And, you know, certainly not least, we're here for you. You know, we all have different knowledge sets and we all have our own expertise. One of the things that can be intimidating in today's technology world is that it's moving quickly and not necessarily every one of us has every last bit of expertise we might need in order to feel comfortable in making decisions or making our best contribution. There are ways that we can help with that, whether it's today or just by reaching out and having a conversation, we're happy to do it. I think you said it perfectly there, Matt. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, I appreciate it, Jamin. So I guess we'll uh, open the floor to see if there are any further questions and maybe follow up on some of those that uh, you know, perhaps uh, you know, we haven't gotten to just yet. I did yeah, see a I, question. Oh, you, you go, Jamin. Okay, yeah, no, you're exactly right. I think we're probably saying the same thing. The, the question we had from... Uh, Carlton, and perhaps it's come up with other people yep. as well, is the, you know, the new relic compared to AWS QuickSight. Matt, perhaps you can elaborate a little bit different, uh, a little bit more on the differences between some of the services already absolutely. built into AWS and, okay, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And, uh, you know, to be honest, it's probably something I would love to unpack with Carlton and in, in more detail, you know, feel free to reach out to us, Carlton, so we can get into some of the specifics about what you might need and what, what might matter most to you. I can say, you know, sort of broad strokes, one of the amazing things about AWS is that there's just such a, a wealth of capabilities, whether it's CloudWatch, whether it's QuickSight, there are various monitoring capabilities. There are, uh, you know, all kinds of capabilities within the AWS ecosystem. You know, one of the differences with New Relic is that we try to enrich the data that AWS can make available to us through those same kinds of capabilities, whether it might be data that might be surfaced through QuickSight or whether it might be through CloudWatch and go further, uh, you know, with, for example, in the case of uh, an application, whether it might be your website, let's say it's running on WordPress or Drupal, for example, we have, um, you know, deeper insights that we can hook into in your environment. We use uh, a technique or um, a capability called agents that will integrate at a very deep level into those services and give you kind of that under the hood view. I don't know if you've ever taken your car to a mechanic where they've plugged your car into the diagnostic computer. You can basically think of New Relic in a very similar way where we will plug your fundraising platform or website or whatever the workload might be into richer capabilities at a more deep level than what some of these native offerings uh, within the AWS platform might provide. That's not to take anything away from what AWS does. This is just where we provide unique value as a platform. So that that is one answer, is depth and detail and getting into a bit more of the why. Particularly, you know, one thing to think about, the second answer is breadth. Uh, you may have services that are 
not necessarily running in AWS, or you may have those services running in AWS, but they're provided by somebody else where you don't have uh, access to things like uh, CloudWatch or for QuickSight for, for their specific environment. In those cases, there are ways that we can instrument those workloads and still provide insight into what's performant versus what may not be working exactly as it should. So you can think about it in the case, let's bring it down to earth rather than speak at sort of really, really high level. Payment processing is an example. You know, there you may use, uh, you know, a payment processor like Brightvine or PayPal or something like that. We can provide insight into how those APIs are performing or not, given how important they are, regardless of where they're running. And more importantly, as it's presented to your user on a page, on that donation page, you can see end to end exactly every piece of what's serving up that experience and help optimize it. In the case of something like uh, your credit card payment processor, that's definitely something you wanna have your eyes on and make sure that everything is working exactly as it should. And that's where we can take things a little bit broader regardless of where uh, those inter interactions with third parties might be taking place. Hopefully that helps give a little bit more information, but like I say, I would love to talk a bit more in detail with you offline. Um, Matt and Holly, some people have asked about contact information. Do we have, what's the best way for people to get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can reach all three of us through um, o for g info at newrelic.com. I'll put that in the chat as well here. So that will reach every one of us. That's probably the best way. I just popped it in. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate that. We had another question. Um, maybe Carrie, you got that already. Oh, um, there was a question about the impact fund. So I put in some information about that. There's a website you can go to. Um, and applications, uh, usually we ran last year around May, uh, May to June. So, um, you can email me and I can, uh, give you some more information about that. And I will drop that, um, page link into the chat as well, just on the information from last year to give you a bit of a flavor for what will be upcoming in this year's round. Did we answer Lily's question? What is the website to look for into these opportunities? I think we did. I'm looking back one moment. I put in a link to the observ observability for good site. Thank yep. you, Carrie. And Thanks, Carrie. Trubato. Looks like you've got it. I think there was a question along the way um, that I'll indulge if um, just for half a moment here um, on Azure, Microsoft Azure. Mm -hmm. uh, New Relic is available. Uh, for Azure workloads as well. Um, yeah, so we we do have that that capability. Obviously, here we're talking mainly about AWS, but I did see that that question, so wanted to respond to that. Yeah. Yep. Anything else that folks are thinking about in terms of fundraising related initiatives or either broader technology challenges, digital transformation, anything that's on your mind? Okay. All right. Oh, I'm brand new to all of this. This is from Janine. And I have a question about how different systems interface and what they do. Oh my Great gosh. question. That is, that yeah. is an amazing question. That's, That's so good. Golden ticket. Yeah, it really is. So, um, you know, let's start with AWS and not to <laughs> not to take the mic from you, Jamin, but maybe I'll take a first crack at this. Feel free to chime in if you'd like. Um, you, know, you can think of AWS as the world-class way to run just about any bit of the technology that you might need to install, deploy, or develop. So that's a really wide sweeping answer. 
Um, but you know, whether you might have going back to Jamin's example of had at one point in time, a server in a closet somewhere, you know, now you can run those in world-class data centers all around the world and not have to maintain that physical box in your closet and whether, and worry about whether the power is good or what your network connection is like. And there's so much more that I could say about AWS, but that's a bit of its uh, initial thought there. And it very well may be that if you're working with a hosting partner, for example, that they're running in AWS uh, because so many of the world-class uh, hosting uh, organizations are doing that today. Um, you know, it, the richer answer here is is probably, again, more of a conversation for offline, but I'll take a quick stab again at, at New Relic. So you have um, services running uh, globally in the cloud with AWS. Um, as Jamin alluded to, you're paying on a, a usage basis. That's the very same with New Relic as well. That's a point I should weave in here, which is that you know, if you get to a point of growth where you're uh, exceeding what we generously offer for free, which we find is, I, I should mention, our free tier is uh, really robust for nonprofits who participate with us. So, you know, the vast, vast majority of our, our nonprofit customers uh, find that that free tier is adequate. If you outgrow it, though, you're only going to pay for what you actually use. It's the exact same concept of consumption-based pricing. Uh, and that's something where we're really proud of that. That's something we've worked really hard to do uh, to, to you know, provide our services similar to a, a cloud in that consumption-based pricing model. In terms of the capabilities of New Relic, you know, just to really simplify it, if you are an engineer and you're really trying to push the envelope on performance or it matters whether a service is working or not, you probably can make great use of New Relic. That's the short answer. We are uh, your guide through all of your technology estate and how it's running. Uh, we can surface all kinds of insights about how to respond to what's going on as it may be needed. So if there's something that you are getting asked about today by your boss of like, hey, why was that part of the site sluggish the other day? I noticed that, or I heard about it from one of our major donors. We can help you get one step ahead of that and address those types of things uh, before they start. Um, there's a lot to be said about that, but that's really our job is to de-risk your use of technology and to um, help your teams move more quickly and on a more informed basis. You know, I'll, I'll round the circle here. Um, you know, it, think of uh, driving your car in a really deep fog versus driving a car, uh, you know, on, on a beautiful sunny day. You need visibility in order to be effective. And you can sort of carry that thought process further and further. But that's really what we help you do is see uh, more and be more informed and more strategic and how you're uh, using your technology and how it's working for you. Right. We have a question for Jamin. How does AWS compare to my web management host from Janine? Yeah, thanks so much. So I was thinking about how to answer this and, and with, you know, given the audience, I, I, I just want to learn more about it, Janine. It depends. And I hate to say that, but the reason why I think it really depends is because it needs to, we need to understand the, um, the goals of your organization and which technology you're currently using, as well as how AWS can add to that current usage. Um, a lot of it can come down to ease of use in terms of the difference, uh, cost savings and security. Um, but again, I, I come back to the point of um, encouraging you to connect with our nonprofit team. It, we have an entire team dedicated to supporting nonprofits and their use of AWS to answer questions just like the one you have. Um, and I'm gonna put that contact information right here again. So I don't mean to deflect, but I don't wanna give you an answer that isn't appropriate, um, but I would rather encourage you to uh, reach out um, and then uh, we can understand your unique needs and provide a unique solution to help you meet those needs. 
Awesome. And we have another one for both Jamin and Matt. Um, uh, sorry, where was it? We're talking about the training, the training with it, with AWS contact nonprofits. Thank you. There was one more. Um, While I, while you look, I'm happy to also speak. I mean, I think training is a really good point because right. yep. a lot of this is new information and not at first the easiest to digest. So I would just want to call out that it's super normal to have questions, a lot of questions, to be eager for more training. And what excites me about this opportunity is uh, I, my mom always says the best problem to have is the one where there's a solution. And in the context of having questions and being thirsty for trainings, the solution exists both on the new Relic side as well as AWS to help upskill you and your team so that you can be informed, not only to borrow the analogy I used previously at a dinner party, but moreover to enable you to put hands on keyboards to advance your nonprofit's mission, to save your organization more money to drive fundraising efforts and reach and exceed your goals. So um, it's just a matter of exploring because the resources are abundant and the training is readily available. Um, Lily makes a good point. Yeah, Lily, we do have in-person training. It depends on where you are, of course, um, but I know that there's a skill center that recently opened up at uh, our Arlington office, where they do hands-on trainings um, day in and day out. I know it also happens across the country, but um, to your question, in-person is possible. And there's also, you know, this isn't in-person, but there are third-party resources. Um, so you're in Los Angeles. Uh, my guess is the answer is yes. They're called awesome days, at least for the AWS. I'll let you speak for New Relic, Matt, but awesome days are in-person convenings for trainings and information gathering. That's so awesome, Jim, and I'm so excited to hear that. That's really wonderful. Uh, to answer your question about the New Relic side, uh, we, we do offer both um, just in slightly different ways. We have what we call New Relic University online which I believe is at learn.newrelic.com, but Carrie or Holly can check me on that. Um, so those are instructor-led uh, training offerings uh, done virtually. In terms of the physical or in-person uh, nature of your question, we have uh, what we call future, future stack. Uh, historically, we've been doing that uh, as a customer conference at one location. What we've learned is that it's better to take those uh, globally and bring them to more cities. So that's the approach we've been taking. And a lot of those events, um, every single one of them, in fact, there's a concentrated uh, enablement or set of learning sessions uh, that you can participate in. Uh, some are under the guise of just straight up training like you might expect. And then there are other ones where you might learn about what customers are doing uh, that may not be less may not be as much about doing an actual lab or uh, what you might imagine as training, but you can learn just as much and in some cases even more from uh, fellow customers. Lily has one more question for Jamin about finding an address for the in-person trainings. So oh, yeah. Can follow Absolutely. Up with Lily on that. Yeah, Lily, let me... Um... Let me... I love in person. I agree. Sometimes you just yeah. learn better when you're like there being present. You learn from others as well. Um, but yeah, I would yeah. also encourage you, Lily, to explore the online, um, like the video resources that that AWS has and also that we create. Um, you know, it's just endless, literally. It's I surprising what you can about, learn. Um... NGO versus a nonprofit? That's an excellent question. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to post in the chat um, our eligibility guidelines. The short answer on this is that it really comes down to the local designation with the, the corresponding government agency uh, for your organization. So are you a, a registered charity or something along those lines? So um, 
we can delve into that detail a bit more offline. Feel free to reach out to us again. Uh, but that, you know, I believe in most cases, the answer is yes, but there are certain exceptions. So have a look at uh, our public info on eligibility. Feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you. Well, I think all the questions have been answered and you guys did a great job. Um, final words, Matt and Jamin? Well, coming from me, I just want to say a huge thank you to our partners uh, at TechSoup. We're so happy to participate in this and really grateful for all of the attendees investing their time and for everybody who might watch this offline as well for your time and your, your interest. Feel free to reach out. Uh, and I also want to huge, say a huge, huge, uh, you know, multiplicity of thanks to Jamin. Um, so awesome to be working with him and to be partnered with AWS. We, we can't send enough love uh, to Jamin and the AWS team. So thank you so much. Feelings are totally mutual and you said it perfectly. Thanks to everyone who joined as well as to TechSoup. And we really look forward to supporting you along this journey. It's uh, largely a matter of when as opposed to if and the fact that you all have showed up is an indication that you are taking steps in the right direction to advance your technology usage at your organization and for that i'm confident you'll be rewarded so thanks again thank you aretha and have a great rest of your day everyone thank you all